I am Nathaniel P. Hoop Whistle, professional fraud and bar owner. <laughs> and the other day, I found some stone bitch trying to pick the lock of my house or church, whatever you want to call it. I said, what you doing, son? What you trying to do, trying to get into my church? And he, he just looked at me, and he's all shaking. He's all shaking with fear. He thought I was going to do something to him. I said, calm down, son. There's no need. Just get to calm down. Now, I'm sure you got a, a perfectly good reason why you're trying to break into my house. And he said, he, he looked at me, and he said, Mr. Hoot Whistle, I'm behind my rent, Mr. Hoot Whistle, and I, I just wanted to break into your church to steal something so I could sell it and pay my rent. And I said, I don't believe you, sir. I think you're just some thief. So I took that song bitch and took him down to the basement. And I said, son, you're going to polish everything in this room. You're going to be my, my cleaner from now on. Or so I'm going to call the cops on you, son. And they're going to send you to prison for being, being a thief. So now he works for me for free. Now I got my own housekeeper. And, and he just vacuums everywhere. There's all my, all my laundry, all my cleaning. And I, I don't even have to pay the son bitch because he's just too, too free that I'll, I'll hand him over to the law and he'll just go to prison. So he just does my bidding. But I'm not, I'm not a cruel son bitch. And I decided I would give him a slight wage so I, I pay him in booze. But I pay him in cheap booze that has passed its sell by day, which might make him a little sick, but hey, that, that's, that's what you get for being a thief. You know, I gave this son bitch a job, and I helped him out so he didn't have to try and find money to pay rent. I gave him a home. I let him go and sleep out in the woodshed, which was full of damp mold. And was that son bitch grateful? No, he was not. And the very next day, I, I found him with one of his friends trying to steal my TV and my, my radio. My computer. Yeah, I have a computer. I know what one it is. I didn't just fly in from the 19th century. I'm a modern, modern gentleman. I know about modern technology. <laughs> so there, there, there are wise. I just come downstairs, half asleep, having just woken up from the best dream I ever had in my whole damn life. A little bit hungry, stomach's rumbling. I thought I'd go and have me some sausages and bacon. And I'm coming down the stairs, and there I see my employee, my cleaner, stealing my TV and all my things, all my electrical things, all my, my goods, with his friend. And they, they're just taking me out the front door. Bold, bold as goddamn brass. <laughs> I just looked at him and I said, you son of a bitch. Why do you think you're doing <coughs> After all I've done for you. I said, I've given you a nice moldy shed to sleep in. And you even get free rain water coming through the ceiling. And that's your shower. And that's your drinking water, son. It's a free water on tap, son. And I give that to you for free. And this is how you will pay me. I said, I'll let you clean my house. I'll give you that privilege of cleaning my house. And I'll let you clean my laundry and sweep my floor. And he didn't think that was a privilege. So much. I said, that's an honest thing. You get to work for Nathaniel P. Hoopless for free. And you should be honest. And he didn't understand. And he thought I was, he thought I was an asshole. And I didn't understand his way of thinking. I did not understand why he would think this. So I did the only thing I could do. And I, I telephoned some, some good old boys from, from back home. And they came by and they, they took the two gentlemen away. They have a, a nice conversation with them, a nice civilized conversation out in the woods. 
or the desert who knows where they took them. They'll probably never be seen again. That's, that's just the way it is. So I thought I was going to have a nice relaxing day after that. I thought I got rid of that son bitch. Got rid of the son bitch friend too. I thought I'm going to, I'm just going to make myself some, some bacon and pour myself a whiskey and have myself a nice relaxing Sunday morning. And then I realized I got no milk for my tea. So I was gonna drink tea with my whiskey and I got no damn milk. And then I realized I hadn't had no damn milk delivered for two weeks. And I wonder why my tea had been tasting strange. Because it had no damn milk in it. So I thought, why isn't the milkman delivering my milk no more? Why is there some bitch out there? So I went outside and I noticed he was across the street delivering milk. I thought maybe he'd been sick. Or maybe something had happened to him. And that's why he wasn't delivering no milk no more. But there he was, bold as brass, delivering milk to everybody else on the street but me. And I thought, what the hell is this sign? I can't have this. This is discrimination. And I, I, I just, I took myself and I marched across the street to that milkman. I said, Hello, son. You know who I am? And he looked at me up and down, and he had a sneer on his, his face, and he looked at me with disgust. He said, I'm, he said, he said, I know who you are, Mr. Hoop Whistle, and I know what you've done, and I know what you did to that priest. And I, and I said, so that's why you're not giving me my milk then, son. And he said, that's right, Mr. Hoop Whistle. You have no more milk for me. Cause I know who you are and I know what you are. And I'll never serve you, Mr. Hoot Whistle. And I said, you son, bitch. You're paid to serve everybody. You got no choice in that. And I, I took I took that milk and I took his keys. And I, and I, I dragged that milk down the street. I took him into a into a bar, this a neighboring bar just down the street, and I handed him over to the, some bikers. And, and I said to the bikers, I said, he's my friend. He wants to party. He wants to have lots of fun, and he wants to buy everyone drinks. He's got a whole load of money in his float that he's got in his bag. He's got tons and tons of money there, and he wants to buy drinks to everybody. And he, he wants you to keep him here. I want you to keep him here in this bar and have tons of drinks all day long. So the, the back is in the bar, they agreed and they kept him in the bar. While I went off back up the street, I got in his milk, his milk truck and I drove it across the street to the church and I started to unload all the milk and I put it all, all inside my church. I thought, oh, this milk is mine now, son. I'm going to sell it all. I'm going to make cocktails. I'm going to make milky cocktails. I'm going to get whiskey, gin, vodka, every kind of booze there is. I'm going to mix it with milk. I'm going to sell it as the brand new expensive cocktail in my bar. And I thought, that milkman, he's just going to get back in his milk truck and he's just going to do the same thing again and again. And I thought, I can't have that, son. He's just going to keep selling milk to everybody, not me. And I can't have that. I just, I can't have that kind of behavior, not, not in my, my town. I thought, this, this son of a bitch got to be taught a lesson, son. So I, I jumped back in that milk truck, and I, and I drove it. I drove it out as far as I could. I drove it right into the local woods, which are really dense. And I, I drove it all through the woods, and, I, and it smashed up truck as I drove. Everywhere I, I drove, I kept smashing into trees while driving that truck. And then I got myself killed a few times. And at one point I was thrown right through the through the windscreen. And I fell out the front of the truck and tumbled down down the hill. But I, I just picked myself back up and I, I went back up that hill and I got back in that milk truck and I just carried on driving around, smashing into trees, smashing again and then reversing into trees, scraping up against branches, 
ruined all the paint work in that damn truck. And I, I broke up, broke the, I broke the axle and the chassis. And I really messed that truck up. I thought, you milkman son of a bitch, this is your punishment. I dare not to sell me milk. And then I just <laughs> Man. <laughs> and then what did I do? What did I do next, huh? Tell me what I did next, because I can't remember. And I just took that truck. I took that truck and I drove it right out to the desert. And, but I made sure that I called myself a taxi cab first. So as soon as I arrived out in the desert and I got out of that milk truck, I removed certain pieces of the engine so it couldn't be started again. And I, I, I put the keys in my pocket. And then as the taxi cab arrived, I jumped in that taxi and I got him to take me back to that bucket bar that's down the street from my church. And I walked in through that, that at the front door. And I found that milkman sitting on the floor and he wasn't very happy. So he'd been kept there for hours, not being able to work. And the bikers had spent all of his money buying drinks for themselves. And I said, hello, son of a bitch. I said, hello, you son of a bitch. I said, get off your feet. Come on, get up, son. I gotta have a talk with you, son. And that milkman, he, he wouldn't budge. So I had to drag him off his feet. And I stared him right, right in the eyes. And I said, son, here's your keys. And I dangled the keys in front of him. And I said, look. These are the keys to your milk truck, son. And I picked up a bottle of, or a glass of booze, and I dropped those keys into the booze. And then I threw the drink in his face. And I handed him the glass, with the, key, with the keys still in, in the glass. And I said, son, there's the keys to your milk truck. And I, uh, and you'll find your truck out in the, in the desert, son. Where it belongs. Oh, oh, oh some, some bitch. People who cross me deserve to be out in the desert. So there, there you go, son. Anyone who crosses me, son, pays the price. The old milk truck's out in the desert, son, where it should be, where it'll always be. And don't you try and go and get it. I said, you. If you want, want to carry on being a milkman, son, you're gonna to have to travel all the way out to that desert, and you're gonna to have to tow that mill truck back because I took pieces of the engine out. But I didn't tell him which pieces. And that, that milkman, he looked so, so sad. I almost felt sorry. I almost felt a little bit of guilt. I, I don't think I'm actually capable of feeling guilt. I don't, I don't think I've ever felt guilty about anything in my whole damn life. So that that, that movement just looked down to the ground. And I thought, justice has been served, son. And I just walked out of that biker bar and back up the street to my own church bar. And I went back inside. And I sat down, poured myself a whiskey. And I smiled, happy and content, that I had dished out my own personal form of justice.